I still have a number of guys uh, getting treatment. Um, one quick announcement. We did trade cornerback Gary Conley to the Houston Texans. And it was a tough decision, obviously. And uh, we certainly wish Gary on the best good young player. Uh, we do have some young corners that we drafted, Trayvon Mullen. Uh, we have Isaiah Johnson coming back soon. Keyshawn Nixon, Nevin Lawson is back. We want to look at some younger players and uh, wish Gary on the best. Thank him for his contribution. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions I can. Had Gary on played it to the standard that you hoped? <clears throat> you know, I think he's a good player. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to get into it any other than that. I think he's a good young player. Uh, we drafted two young corners to play also, and uh, they're back ready to go here quickly. And um, we want to give them an opportunity, like we are a, a lot of our other young players at other positions. Who would be the guy that, that, that would step in uh, to that? Well, we're going to look at Mullen, obviously, Trayvon Mullen. Isaiah is not back yet. We expect him back for the Charger game, uh, which will be a home game. Uh, be exciting for that. Um, but uh, Nevin Lawson, again, will work in at that position, as will Keyshawn Nixon. And uh, we're going to try to get Trayvon ready to go. Trayvon hasn't got a lot of opportunities the last couple of weeks on defense. What have you seen from him in practice that makes you? Yeah, uh, progressively fun? improving. And the only way to get these guys uh, ready for prime time is to put them out there. So uh, we like the progress that he's made. That's why we took him at the top of the second round. Like I said, we really like Isaiah Johnson, the way he looked last week on the practice field. and. Nevin Lawson is a guy that started 50 games. So uh, you throw in Keyshawn Nixon, we feel like we've got some guys that we want to take a look at. Uh, Gary Young got put on a good team with a great coach that's in playoff contention and uh, certainly wish him the best. Any hesitation at all trading a guy to a team you're playing? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's difficult. But it does give us three third round picks next year, five picks really in the top 90. And that uh, is, is an area that we wanted, man. We wanted to continue to add to our football team. And um, we're excited about the possibilities next year in the draft. It is hard. It's hard to trade them to anybody. But um, we got some young guys that we want to have an opportunity, and that's the decision we made. you anticipate remaining, <coughs> me, remaining active over the next week here and possibly adding players to, to your roster as head of the trade? We're going to try. We're going to do what we feel like we can to improve. Um, Obviously, there's a lot goes into making trades, but um, we're excited about having three third round picks, two first round picks in next year's draft, and we're really happy with the progress uh, uh, with a lot of our young players, and we want to provide opportunity for some more of them, and that was a big decision, and uh, we think Mullen and, and Isaiah and Keyshawn, those guys get, need, to, need to see the field. I see the pass defense had some a rough day yesterday. How much of that is facing Aaron Rodgers, and how much of that were things that you guys could have done better? It was a combination of both. You know, we had a miscommunication on a coverage at the end of the first half. I miss a 14-10 game. We're at the two-yard line with a minute 50 to go. And we're on their two-yard line, down four. Uh, next time I think we get the ball, we're down 28-10. Uh, we had a miscommunication on a big play at the end of the first half. Uh, we got beat bad on the first play of the second half against man-to-man -man coverage. Didn't play the route very well. We got to uh, eliminate the explosive plays. We just can't give up big chunk yardage plays, and that's going to be an area of emphasis uh, as it has been. What was more bothersome yesterday, the defensive line or the defensive backs? Uh, you know, I think when you when you give up 430 yards passing, five touchdowns, it's it's everybody included. It starts with me. Starts with uh, everything that we do from a preparation standpoint uh, to a down to down execution and uh, our communication, um, uh, our whole process really has to improve against these great quarterbacks. You know, they're, they're not forgiving people. You know, these guys see, uh, see a mistake, they make you pay. And um, Rodgers, I, I credit him, he did a great job. What about uh, Mullen's game makes him a good fit for your current <clears throat> defensive Well, we system? drafted him. We talked about Mullen when we picked him. You know, he's got size. He's still young. He's an underclassman at Clemson. He's still raw. He's still got some some green to him. But he's a great kid, great competitor. He's got, he's got size, change of direction. He's tough. I think he's got a lot of pride. He's got a big upside. And uh, I feel the same way about Isaiah. I think these guys need 
need to get out there on the grass and play. And um, I'll take responsibility for how it goes. But I have their back. I got a lot of confidence in them. I want to see them. I want to see them go out there and and and, and deal with some of the best receivers in football. Obviously, Traylon struggled in his in his first extended action in the opener. What have you kind of seen in terms of him learning and kind of bouncing back from, from what happened in that in that first game? Well, he's going to get uh, he's going to get targeted. I'm sure quite a bit, like all rookie corners. You know, it's. Uh, part of the process. But I know he had a tough spot against Denver on Monday night. But what I have seen is I've seen day-to-day -day concentration. I've seen day-to-day -day competitiveness. I've seen gradual improvement. And uh, he's a guy that has a lot of confidence. So uh, Trayvon, if you're listening, uh, let's get to work here. You got asked a lot about, about Josh Jacobs uh, you know, being a special player. But was there something in this? in Sunday's game that you thought was different or a sign of progress or anything that you could oh, he's, he's, he's a big time player. He told me during pregame warmups, he says, I'm on today. I got, I got a great feeling. He, he was on. He, he knew he was going to play well. First run of the game was spectacular. I mean, it was, it was a great display of uh, power. Uh, and then I think on his next run, it was a great display of change of direction, stiff arm, slashing ability. He got hurt, went to the Locker room, had to take a shot in the shoulder, came back, showed great toughness. Um, you know, he's he's a real deal. I can't say enough about he and Darren Waller and Moreau and some of our young players. Uh, when you go on the road and, and have almost 500 yards of offense with about 100 called back, you know, it's, a, it's an impressive film. We gotta, we gotta tighten things up around the goal line, no question, but there's a lot of really good stuff that, uh, that we're seeing and, and progress is being made. Be able to do that without without Trent Brown, without Tyrell Williams, until to have that kind of offensive performance. What does that say about just the potential of this group? We're, we're excited. I mean, we feel like we're we're um, pretty good up front. You know, we think uh, David Sharp. We, we'd like to give him a game ball, even though we lost. Uh, but we think Trent Brown could be the best right tackle in the league. Getting Gabe Jackson back is huge. We got a nice swing guard and Denzel Denzel Good. We wouldn't trade Rodney for anybody. And Colton Miller has really improved. And incognito has been a steady force for us. So we, we like our upfront group. We feel like the young skill guys are coming on, and Derek's leadership and poise has been pretty impressive. So the balance is what we're most excited about. You know, we're, we're still trying to run it and, um, you know, show progress on first down, and, and that's been pretty good the last few games. You did bring Trent to Green Bay. Was there a chance he, at all he was going to play, or did you have to wait and see him when you got there? Or And what do you think about this week's prognosis? Yeah, I didn't think there was really a good chance that he could play, but I thought he could be my bodyguard if he didn't. <laughs> you know, I like Trent. I like having him around. Um, I just like I like being around a guy. I like him being around our team. But there was a chance, so we had to take him. I think this week he's got a, a better than 50 and 50 chance. This me being optimistic, but I'd say right now it's questionable at best. He ran today. Uh, he's showing some progress. So all I can say is uh, we're crossing our fingers. You know, we really are. Arden Key, same thing. We think Arden has a chance this week. All I can say is they're questionable now. And we're uh, optimistic that they'll be ready to go for Houston. Specifically, did you like that you saw from Sharp? I mean, he played every snap. He hadn't played in like two years extensively. Um, but stepping in for a guy of Trent's caliber, other than the two holding penalties, which you scored on anyway, what what did you Pretty see? Good. Like? I mean, you know, we did a lot of things different in this game. We uh, we did a lot of different formations and plays and no huddle things, and he handled his assignments extremely well. All you heard about was the Smith brothers. You know, they, I think he did a good job against two really good rushers. They both tried him, and they brought some pressures. And uh, I thought he I thought he handled himself extremely well. I really think having Trent Brown here. Uh, having the ability to um, be a swing tackle in the preseason where he backed up Colton and Trent, I think it really helped him. I think he's um, got a better feel for the offense. He's in better shape than he was a year ago, and he sh it shows. His experience showed. How much of a benefit is it to, to have all three of your tight ends be able to run, uh, to be able to catch the ball and block so well that you can do a bunch of different things with them? like? None of those three are really liabilities in any area. I mean, it's impressive. You know, that's uh, the one position I think I've said, you know, several times that I believe it's the lifeblood of our offense. You know, Waller's not a tight end. He is a football player. You can line him up anywhere. He lined up in multiple places. So did Moreau and Carrier. 
and they can line up in line, and they love playing physical football, and they can line up in the, and they play the finesse game. And they're really smart and supportive of one another. They have no egos. They're great guys. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the tight ends. And, you know, we'll have to give Frank Smith a raise after this press conference. He's done a great job with these guys. What, what does it say about the Raiders or your, yourself in particular that you, you traded three first-round picks in the last 14 months with Mack and Cooper? And that Say team. whatever you want. I mean, you know, we didn't want to trade Mack. I've said that a hundred times. You know, circumstances sometimes are what they are. You know, we're building our football team. Um, you know, we'll see where we are. You know, it's up to, it's up to you, and, and everybody has their own opinion. But uh, we feel like we're doing what's best for our team, period. Let's do two more. Derek's uh, fumble in the red zone uh, last week. Obviously, it's a hustle play. He's trying to make a play. Not everyone loves that rule. Um, it's the second time he's done it in his career. It was almost you know, a splitting image of it a couple of years ago. How much do you have to get on him about that? Or you know, does he know he can't, he can't do that type of stuff? Yeah, I mean, he knows. You know, he knows. I mean, I, uh, like I said yesterday, I really admire the effort. A great effort, phenomenal effort. But uh, he's got to be careful with football, especially when you put it in your left hand in traffic. The inside-out pursuit is coming hard. And uh, it's unfortunate, you know, that play changed the momentum of the game, certainly, but it didn't lose us a game. How cognizant are you of um, monitoring Josh Jacobs? I mean, it must be just <laughs> attempting to use him so much, but you got to get him through an entire season. He's never was a feature back at Alabama yet at any time. How close are you, are you watching him? Yeah, we are. We're trying to mo we'll monitor him. We have two other good halfbacks here, Jalen and DeAndre. But when he's running like he's running, you know, you have to, you have to feed the beast. You know, <laughs> he's hungry. You know, you don't want to come out of the game either. You know, this, guy's, uh, this guy wants to be a great back. And to do that, he's got to play. He's got to play through some tough injuries and some tough spots. But uh, we are going to try to be careful with him. We have been. And... Um, you know, I'll just say this. This is this is one heck of a young football player, one of the best I've ever been around at this age. He's really impressive.